Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video, Super Ultimate Guide to Design Systems. In this video, we're going to explore dev mode. Now that we have created two components, we have applied design tokens, let's actually understand how all of this actually helps developers, right? Because there has to be really good parity between design and code. And if the parity is not there, then there's no point of having a design system. So in this video, I'm going to show you what do developers actually look at? What do they think at? How do they code? And what you need to know as a designer by looking at dev mode. I'm not going to just show you the features of dev mode. I'm going to explain how engineers are going to look at your components and make sure that they do things correctly. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before I show you dev mode in Figma, I'm going to show you something in Atlassian's design system. Now, here I'm in the design tokens section, as you see over here, I'm in the examples page. All right. I'm going to come down and I'm going to look at this dialog box. All right. Now, I'm going to come over here and look at the text over here, basically the code over here. Now, there is nothing to worry over here. You don't have to focus on anything else. Just focus on this part. So basically what they're saying is that they have three tokens. As you can see, they have three tokens. And just the way we named our tokens in Figma, Atlassian is using a different naming convention. It doesn't really matter what the naming convention is. It can be anything you want as long as you and your developers can understand it. It's just that you need a token. So here for the text, which is called modal dialogue, whoops, all right, they have a token called as color.text, right? And it is N800. Right? That's the reference value and they've called it color text. Now they also got background and shadow tokens as well. Now I'm not going to look into that, right? We're just focusing on the color text. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open dev mode in Chrome, right? We're going to look at dev mode in Figma, but here I'm going to open dev mode in Google Chrome and that's basically called the inspector panel. So I'm going to right click and say inspect. Okay. And now I'm going to zoom in here again. Okay. And now I'm going to find that uh, text item. I'm going to click here. Okay. Now I selected it. Now, if I come all the way down here, you can see the color value. So if I turn that off, you can see that the color changes. Okay. And here the color value VAR basically stands for variable. Okay. And hyphen hyphen DS hyphen text. So this is how it's actually going to look in code. Now this is CSS. Now CSS is used for building websites for designing mobile apps depending on the language, the way these are structured will look different. And I'm going to show you that in dev mode, right? But as you can see here, it says hyphen hyphen DS stands for design system and they have text. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and click on this button over here and I can click on this one and let's search for that color. Right? So what we can also do is I'm going to just type in color over here and let's see if we can find it over here. So here, Variable, DS stands for design system, hyphen text, hyphen inverse, okay? This is how the naming convention is in the code base, right? But here, in this case, if you look at it, um, and maybe we should look at the one on top, right? Here, this is, the pretty, this is pretty much the same button. In design, they called it color text inverse. But here, it is DS text inverse. Now, it's fine that here it's color and here it's DS. That's irrelevant. But for the majority, you can see here, it says text inverse and text inverse. But what about the background? You know, let's look at the background, right? I'm going to click over here on the background and uh, we're going to search for background. Here we said color background selected bold, but here it says DS background background brand bold, right? Now there's a little bit of a change. Now that's fine. Ideally, they should be the same but Atlassian is doing its own thing and that's absolutely fine, right? But what you need to understand here is this naming convention, DS hyphen background hyphen brand bold, right? Now let's go to Figma's dev mode and see how it looks for the components that we have made so far. Now here in Figma, let's turn on dev mode and see how this looks for developers and what is it that they actually want and care about and how do you ensure that you have done it correctly so that engineers will not make mistakes, okay? So I'm going to turn on dev mode. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and click on this. We're going to focus on this one, right? Uh, yeah. Now the first thing it tells you that this is a variant of the component. And if you click on, let's say an instance in this case, it says it's a component instance, right? That's fine. Now here, it also shows you the variable, pro the various properties, right? This is no, right? So this is fine. It shows you uh, all the paddings as well. What we care about 
is the colors because that's what we added. Now we know that we added, if I maybe turn this off for a second, you can see that we added surface primary. Okay. Now if I come over here and we are now in CSS, CSS is the language used to design websites. Okay. Here in the style, you can see that the code looks exactly same as how we saw it in the browser. It's a background color, variable, all right? Surface, surface primary, all right? Now here we are repeating the word surface, surface, right? Now that's again, very confusing. Now engineers can actually see the values right over here. If you want, if you want to see the hex value, you can see all of that and you can see all that information really clearly, right? But here it says surface, surface primary. Okay. If I click on this, okay, we have a border. Let's look at what the code looks for the border. Here you can see that we have the border radius, the border uh, information, and now the border color variable, right? So the border is one pixel. It's a solid color, right? But it has this variable, which is border, border, transparent, static which means that the word border is being repeated here and we don't really want that. It should just be border transparent static, you know, it should be as simple as that. Now let's look at another component. Let's go to the navigation bar that we created. All right. And I want to come over here and click on this text. All right. Now here you can see that this text, uh, actually we need to click on the text value. Yeah, we clicked actually the text value right over here. Here you can see uh, all the values are here. The color is content, content primary. Now let's look at other programming languages, right? So I'm going to click on this, which is the surface. Now we added the surface uh, primary, which was the normal one. And I'm come over here, change it from CSS to SwiftUI. Now SwiftUI is used to design iOS apps, right? You can come over here and you can see in the variables section, all right? It says surface, surface primary. And even here in the background, it says, surface, surface primary. Now there's no hyphen over here and that's just how the programming language is structured. If you come here and use Jetpack Compose, which is basically used for designing Android apps, it's called Jetpack Compose, but they just call it Compose over here. Here again, it says color is equal to variable dot surface, surface primary, which means we are repeating the word surface. So what it means is the reason it's calling surface, surface primary is because that's how we set up the structure in the Figma variables. What am I talking about? If I come over here, and open this up. You can see that it is actually capturing surface, surface primary, right? That's the problem. So what that means is if I go ahead and just call it primary, call it inverted, call it static, all right? And now when I click on this, it's now called surface hyphen primary. And if I come down here to dev mode and we can look at the CSS again, here, it just says hyphen surface hyphen primary, which is exactly what we want. And this is super easy for engineers because we're, rep we're removing all those unnecessary words, right? And even for us designers, all right, if you look at the Figma variables, this is a lot easy and it's honestly quite fast to look at this, right? Or else we're repeating this word content, content, content all the time, and it's becoming a big mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and just remove all of this unnecessary information. I'm just going to call it primary, secondary, static, and brand, all right? And here, this is going to be transparent, static. So we can actually look at that, right? So let's come down here and we can click on this button, go to dev mode. And here in the uh, border, you can see here it says border transparent static, all right? And here for the text, uh, or yeah, let's, let's click on the text. We need to actually double click here and more. Yeah. So here color content primary, right? And apart from that, when we created these components, what engineers can do is they can see all the properties, right? Now let's look at an instance, right? Let's take an instance of, um, this, right? This one. So here they can open it up in playground and they can actually see what were all the properties that are available? And they will set this exact same thing in their code base as well, right? They can see what are the options that are going to be here? What are the options that are going to be here? And they can see to create this instance or this variant, what are the settings, right? And this is super easy for them to actually build this in their code base. And this is again, going to bring parity between design and engineering. 
And of course, not just that, it's going to reduce miscommunication, right? And it's not just that, it even shows you what are the elements that are being used. You can see that it's using uh, the icon button component and it is also using the tabs component, right? So here you have the main, you can click on this to go to the main component so people, so that engineers can go there. If you click on that, you can see it takes you over here. And once you take it over here, you, when engineers are building this component, you know, they can click and check all their values and whatever it is, right? And here again, this is using components as well. So let's say they want to see the active state, they can click on that, they're gonna come over here and they're gonna see all the information. So that's how dev mode helps you think like a developer because it's really important to understand how to think like a developer and make sure that developers life are also made much easier. Because if you are able to help developers, they will be able to take your design and build it exactly like you have designed it, right? So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.